Good morning from, ooh, it's cold today here in Zagreb. Um, I'm out on my patio right now, I will show you. So down there is more of Zagreb. And then this is more of Zagreb. We have the mountains in the back. And then I go to school up here in that area. I'm going to grab the rest of my stuff for school. My, I'm just gonna collect everything and then I'll show you my walk. It is 7.22, I can't leave any later than 7.25. I have a 10 minute walk and then my bus will take me all the way up to the top of the hill where my school is. Okay, I am now in my classroom. So much for bringing you on my walk, but it's honestly not that entertaining of a walk. Um, so I'm gonna show you my classroom really quick. So I have 11 students. So this is my classroom that I need to slowly start setting up. I'll tell you quickly about what I do here. So I'm actually the year four teacher. I teach music, art, English. We have international primary curriculum, so I teach that. Um, I don't teach math because I specialize in IPC here. So my partner and my best friend here, she teaches math for my class and I teach IPC for hers. And I'm also the year five uh, music teacher as well. So I have my bachelor's in theater arts and then I received my TEFL back in, I took it during quarantine. I came home um, for a few months after living in France and I decided to get my TEFL and then I moved here in June. Uh, to get my job, I was doing a ton of research during quarantine, but obviously everything was shut down here. Everything was online. No one was really hiring. So when I moved back here in June to work down for a seasonal job in the coast, I had then started calling um, some schools and I got a hold of this one, Bright Horizons, which were an international British school. I should have told you that. Um, but my biggest recommendation is that if you want to work in Croatia, Emails are like the worst way to communicate, which is hard if you're out of the country um, because they just won't answer emails, they answer phone calls. Um, so I was lucky enough to be able to be here a little bit before I needed to work up here in Zagreb and I was able to make that phone call. There are a few, so we're the British International School, there's one more British International School. There's the American International School and then I believe, I know there's a German private school and I think a Dutch. Um, there's some other smaller uh, English speaking programs. Sorry, I'm very sweaty from my walk. <laughs> but uh, there is the Croatian American Society, CAS. They're always hiring, so that's a good job to kind of start with here and then move on if you wanted to. Helen Darone also has a school in Zadar down on the coast and up here in Zagreb. I think those are the only two places. And there's a bunch of like kindergarten preschools that are also English speaking as well. So there's a few options, but there's a reason why Croatia is not, there's not a lot of information on how to teach English here because it's not very common. Just to clarify really quickly, I am in Croatia. Zagreb is the capital of Croatia up here in the continental northern part of Croatia. Um, I am about Depending on where on the coast I want to be, I'm about tops four hours from the coast if you're going towards Sadar. Two, if you're up in like Istria and from the Vrovnik, I'm not sure. I have yet to go there. So I do have to wear a mask and I'm going downstairs to get my temperature checked. All of my kids, the kids one through four on year four, they don't wear masks. Um, but years five to eight, that's what we have in our schools. So we have one to eight, five to eight, I'll wear masks and every child gets their temperature taken every morning. We currently have two students out in isolation that are doing online learning because of, um, they came in contact with their parents have gotten sick. Um, but we are staying in school, we're staying healthy, um, everyone is, is doing well and we are prepped to go online at any time. Um, we have our Google Classroom set up and our online schedule if needed, but right now we're staying hopeful and and we're wearing our masks and just doing lots of hand washing. <laughs> My kids are watching me take this, but okay, will you answer for, uh, for the video? Do I speak Croatian? No. <laughs> You're supposed oh, to hype me up. No, I do not speak Croatian. I, I speak a little bit, but you don't need to be able to speak that to work here. So I took the online. <laughs> My kids are right here watching me take this. So I did online, yes. Um, I think it was like the 10 week, 11 week course. 
and honestly it was like a couple hours a week that I took from my time because I was also teaching for VIP kid at the time. My first job was down on the coast in Pakistani. I, I ran an arts department for an international camp and I knew I wanted to move back up here and so that's how I decided on Croatia was because I, I lived down on the coast for two summers now. Um, the biggest challenge is the biggest challenge has been the language and cultural difference. Um, no, you don't have to speak shush. <laughs> No, you don't have to speak the language, but it is um, it is a little isolating here, so making new friends, making those connections. So what's really important for me here was to make make friends inside of school and outside of school and have that those connections so that I... Okay, school hasn't started yet, but it's about to start, so my kids are starting to get here. So I just shared my expenses, like a rough kind of estimate of all my expenses. My apartment that I'm living in is expensive because it was meant for two people and now I'm just living in it alone. Um, so in February I'll move just so I can be saving a little bit more money. But overall, um, with my private school salary, it is, you can live off of it. Um, usually rent should be about like a thousand some kunas, so I will be saving significantly more. But Croatia is a little expensive. But coming here in US dollars is really nice, but that's my savings. So now I'm spending everything in kunas and it can go fast. So I just have to budget, make sure I know what I'm spending and bringing in. And it is, I don't have to work another job. When I first got hired, I was given my contract. I had to take everything to MOOP, which is our police here. And I had to file for a work a work visa. So my work visa is good till April um, because it's something with like only allowing six months of time. Or My biggest tip is to come with savings just in case that finding work is a little bit difficult because I think it's best to come here and be able to, to call and visit in person. So just come with savings so that you have some buffer room. I'm an American citizen and only have that passport, so now I have a Croatian ID because of my work visa. Um, people, it's just a process to get your work visa like anywhere else, but it's totally possible and you don't need your EU citizenship. The biggest challenge has to be that my kids are of different abilities in their English. I have, for instance, two boys from Turkey where their English is okay. My girl from Slovenia, her English and Croatian is perfect, but some of my Croatian kids are still struggling with English and all classes are... That last one got cut off a little bit, but all everything is taught in English except for, of course, their other language courses like German, Spanish, and Croatian. So this is the other fourth grade teacher and my best friend. How many years of teaching experience do you have? Uh, this is my fifth year teaching. Fierce, it's my first. <laughs> So to better explain that, yeah, Sarah, who teaches with me, she has been teaching for five years. She was in England, she was just in Munich, and now she's here, and this is my first year teaching. So really, that's your answer for you. Just have your certificates in your bachelor's and apply away. So the visa process was extremely painful like any other. I got a visa to live in France and that was just as painful. Um, Sarah, because of Brexit, is going to have to do it very soon. Um, okay, but the real answer to the question is I got my contract for my job and I had to take that with... I don't even know what paperwork anymore, um, but I had to prove that. I also had to prove like my... Um, my address here, my insurance is covered by the school. Um, pretty much your contract, as soon as you have that, you can start the process right away. Um, MOOP has this list of things that they have you email in. And then what you do after that is my boss just kept calling them, being like, okay, what does she need now? What does she need now? Because they won't update you or anything when you're missing something. You have to just call and call and call. Um, but like a few trips later, a few emails later, a couple months later, I finally got my visa in through email. I had to pay for it. And now this Thursday, I'm going to pick up my actual Croatian ID. So it's such a, it's a long process. But if you're used to visas, then that's no shock to you. It's, what time is it, Sarah? 3.15? 3.20? <laughs> it's the end of a Tuesday. Tuesdays are rough. Um, but we're done. Our kids are done. If you guys want to look, we're making pumpkins. This is, this is Sarah's. Look how nice that looks. Um, now Sarah and I are off to, we're going to go to the gym, and then we're going to do some lesson planning for next half term, which is a real romantic date night if I've ever heard one. 
I am back home. I'm about to go to the gym. Um, something cool about that is like here, I don't know if they do it anywhere else. I don't know, but we have this thing called a multi-sport pass and its whole point is to get companies to help support their workers to get out, get moving. And so we have these multi-sport passes that have us like, we can go to any gym in all of Croatia. So we go to the gym near our house and we go to one with like a spa. We, it's a very like social thing too. So that's awesome. So we're going to do that. But before I go, I'm going to show you my apartment. As I said, I bought this apartment with another person who's no longer with me. So it is a big, cute apartment that I will be done paying for in February. Um, so it's disgusting because what I told you is a Tuesday. Around my, I mean, I guess it's not that bad. This is dramatic, but it just kind of gets... It needs to be put away. So yeah, so like this is the main room. So like I'm at the door now, I'm walking in. It's the living room, the kitchen, and then I'm very lucky to have like a gorgeous balcony um, that has a cute little view, no furniture, but you know. Um, this is my big girl purchase. I highly recommend everyone gets a TV. Um, and it has an extra spare bedroom for when I have a child. That's a joke. And the bathroom. Oh, sugar. And the main bedroom, which is a mess. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. There's my clothes on the bed. Um, yes. So but my apartment is my biggest expense. Um, it is about half of my salary, which is a bummer. Um, but whatever, you know, we got to make it work. Um, my biggest... This kind of goes into my biggest advice because Sarah and I are both expats and we traveled for work. Um, is that you're if you're moving somewhere and you like plan to stay for a good chunk of time, like invest in your life there. Because like for instance, I wanted a TV and like I was like, no, like I don't know what I'm gonna be here till. I don't know where I'm going next. And Sarah was like, well, if you're gonna act like you're gonna leave soon, then you're gonna leave. But if you want to make a life here, like start investing in it. Start, you know. Because we live out of what two suitcases most of our life, like most of our life, most of the year, like traveling from spot to spot. So if you find a spot and you find your people, like invest in that life, because then you're it's going to be more successful. Talk a little bit more about my school. Um, we I told you we're one through eight for the for years, uh, and every teacher in each grade there's only one teacher for each grade, except for mine, which is fourth grade. So I was very very fortunate and lucky that when I called. Bright Horizons and I talked to my principal. She was like, oh my gosh, I was actually thinking about splitting year four into two years. Like she had just hired Sarah and the class um, was too big. So she wanted to split it because each class, I guess the height is about like 17, 18 is the most we'll put in one class, which is actually really nice. And so now I have 11 kids and Sarah has 13 instead of just one of us having 24, which honestly I could not imagine doing, even though I grew up in the States where it was like 30 plus kids to one teacher. But this is your up. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that on my school and I don't know what to, how to end this. If you've gotten all the way to the end, I'm super impressed. Uh, my school is Bright Horizons, British International School. And then the camp that I worked for is an international American camp, which is called Camp California down in Pakistani, about 30 minutes outside of Zadar. So if you have any questions, Put it in that box. You, I will tag myself so you can follow me and send me messages. And thanks for being on this little journey with me. I'm back. Interesting. Um, I've been getting a lot of questions asked about what course I took. Uh, just broke my computer. I took the 10 week online course, which I highly recommend. It was, I loved it. I had a great professor, teacher, strong woman, um, but I was also teaching for a VIP kid at the time, which was not only great money, but it was also great experience. I understood what I was learning because I was teaching it at the same time. So I highly recommend, highly recommend taking the online course um, and teaching VIP kid at the same time if you can. I'm a full-time school teacher for year four students, so I teach Monday through Friday. I get in at 7.45 and I leave anywhere between 3.30 and 5.30, depending on how well on top of my lesson plans I am. So it's